test or a test bed, and I'll explain that in a moment, and that they have a general uh, overview of in the practice of synthetic biology uh, within those projects. So that's what Sinberg is. There's a vision that we have, which would be to employ engineering standards and to, uh, and, and that application would then enrich the field of synthetic biology and lay the foundation for it, uh, hopefully beyond just the 15 PIs that are practicing it in Sinberg. So to reach out and expand this so that others would benefit and then start practicing it as well. Uh, basically, that's what Sinberg is. We talk about thrusts and test beds because these are basically engineering terms. And test beds are projects that end with the production of something useful. So, for example, we have two major test beds in Sinberg. One is the tumor killing bacterium where we would, the researchers, this is headed by Chris Anderson at UC Berkeley, that project seeks to develop a bacterium, E. coli, that will be able to deliver a, that will seek out a, 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 a tumor in the human body and deliver a toxin to it to kill the tumor. So that's the grand project. Within that, there are many projects to develop a bacterium that can survive in the human blood that won't be destroyed. And there's a lot of engineering to the cell to do that. Incidentally, we call the cell, the organism, a chassis, the body that kind of holds everything together. The chassis, like the chassis of a car, the frame of the car and the works of it. The working guts inside, we have other terms for. But, so that's one of the projects within the tumor killing bacterium project. Uh, we have within that to develop a cell that can excrete the toxin, but in the, in the sense of having it composable, used for other things, that secretion system could also be used to secrete other things as well for other projects. So the utility is not just to make this one uh, toxin, to make this cell that could just make this one toxin, but to develop this cell that has multifaceted potential for other purposes that we may not be working on today, but we or someone else could take this and use it for another important and useful project. So that's one test bed. The other we call MCF, which is short for microbial cell factories. And in that case, we're trying to deliver a compound, a chemical if you like. And that chemical could be a biofuel, it could be a chemical used for the production of a polymer, for example. It could be a drug itself. Or it could be the starting material to make a drug by other means, such as chemistry. There are a whole range of compounds that we are interested in. The basic process is to assemble a biochemical pathway by assembling its gene com genetic components, genes, ribosome binding sites, promoters, and have them express this pathway in a host to make the compound. The components to do this, the genes, may be all different for each pathway. Some will apply to more than one pathway. And so each project within microbial cell factories could be considered standalone and separate. But there may be elements that could apply to more than one. In any case, all the components then would be put in the registry for somebody to use for their own specific project, if applicable. Now we recognize that some components are very unique and they may not have more than one purpose. 
but common elements such as promoters, ribosome binding sites, terminators, these are the, the basic core units that drive expression of genes. These are highly reusable and, and these are important to store in the registry so that others can use them as well. So just summarizing what we have in, in MCF, we have projects, we have three sponsored projects. What I mean by that is that we are using funds in Sinberg to support these projects. And then we have associated projects, which means that other funds outside of Sinberg are, are being used to fund them. But we associate them with Sinberg because they are synthetic biology and uh, we count them as part of the overall Sinberg family of projects. And of course, the reason we can do that is that those are going on in the labs of the PIs anyway, so we don't have to look too far to have them done. And uh, as far as the PI is concerned, he's interested in both, obviously, so we don't necessarily uh, discriminate one set from the other, except in the way we finance them. So the three funded projects in Sinberg we have, one is in, in the MCF, in microbial cell factories, one has to do with the production of a compound called 3-hydroxybutyrolactone, which is a small molecule, which is actually starting material that a number of companies use to make a series of drugs mm -hmm. called statins. Uh, these are cholesterol-lowering drugs. Uh, and that's in uh, the laboratory of Crystal jones Prather at MIT, who spent a number of years before she, her academic appointment at uh, Merck Laboratories, and who work on that. So she has a good background, actually, to do this. Currently, 3-hydroxybutyrolactone is a chemical that's made from, chemically, from other materials. And so uh, she devised a pathway to actually make this. It's a novel pathway. It doesn't exist. So she has to create this pathway by taking genes and modifying them and having them change their behavior somewhat. So that's a very challenging project. And uh, if it succeeds, Merck and others will be able to use a biological source of material rather than having to depend on a chemical source or a petroleum-based source. So that's one project. The other project is the synthesis of a compound called strictosidine, which is made from the isoprenoid pathway uh, that Jay Kiesling's lab has a lot of experience with. You know, if you remember the work on, on uh, artemisinin. And so that's derived from that pathway, and that strictosidine is the basis of a lot of drugs themselves. These are alkaloid-type drugs. And uh, an example is vincristin and vinblastin, and these are anti-tumor compounds. And there it's the same kind of thing, assembly of this pathway from different sources, from plants, and the genes come from plants and some fungi, and what have you, and assembling this pathway, which is a natural pathway, there is a synthesis of this in, in natural, uh, but the supply, I mean in, in natural organisms, it's hard to get at because it comes from plants and it's hard to grow these things. So there is a limited supply of this. If one can establish this pathway in a yeast or a bacterium, then you'd have an endless supply of, of, of the compound and the ability to create a lot more analogs and maybe new drugs. So that's another project, that, that, that's a second project. And one of the original projects in, in, in MCF in Sinberg. And then there's a project in Chris Voigt's lab at UCSF uh, where uh, taking a straight synthetic approach where all the genes involved are, uh, are being uh, synthesized by a company and then assembled in his lab, and, and that's to make uh, carotenoid pigments.
and that's sort of as a demonstration.